Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is there you go. I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I'm the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 478 of the podcast, which will be ending in October. Very exciting. And super excited because today we're starting our seventh and final themed summer. So officially, welcome to 2024, the very cheap summer of Roger Corbin. Apparently, the Fast and the Furious movie, the first of the two movies that we watch, that we will be discussing today, uh, cost $25,000 to make, which it looks a lot cheaper than that. Yes. It's hardly a movie. But it, but it, even though it's hardly a movie, The Fast and the Furious is still better than fucking Oklahoma Woman. We will get to that. But okay, I do want to talk. Okay, we're, 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 we're on the same line here. Go ahead. Good. I will say that I think that this, let's, let's just get started the right way. Uh, I really hated the 1954 film, The Fast and the Furious. Uh, I thought it was boring. I, I thought it was shitty. It was hard. It, it's basically just Florence Nightingale with cars. The Florence Nightingale syndrome with cars. Yeah. And I didn't particularly like it. But I think that it's infinitely better than the original Fast and the Furious because Paul Walker had a history of dating 16-year-old girls. I'm, I'm not... Uh, shitting on the man or his legacy. It's just a fact. He dated one 16-year-old girl, and then he dated another 16-year-old girl. I'm already getting attacked online, on Twitter, and on Facebook for bringing this up. Just bringing it up pisses people off. But I'm sorry that, uh, you know, it's not my fault that Paul Walker had a thing for 16-year-old girls. I think the real issue here is that people are upset about that because he starred in the Vroom Vroom movies with the explosions and the loud music and people just like those more enough than they like the idea of a famous actor dating a prepubescent little girl. But that's beside the point. Yeah. This is our seventh and final themed summer because the show's ending in October. And so... We have done, in the following order, the Summer of Star Wars. Watched all the Star Wars movies. The Summer, except for that Clone Wars animated movie, because it's animated and it doesn't count. The Summer of Saw, where we watched all the Saw movies. I had a blast with that. So one of us did. <laughs> the Summer of Fred Willard, because Fred Willard died right before we did the summer. So we watched a whole summer celebrating the life of Fred Willard, and we played a game where we see how much Fred Willard is in the movie. Yes. And I think that what we should do this summer is spot the dick. Yes, okay. Where we're, we spend all of the movies we watch looking for Dick Miller. Yes. And a, an American hero. I love that man. He's in one of the movies this week. I, I spotted the dick. Yeah, I'm uh, really happy about that. But the summer of Fred Willard was fun. That's our third. And then the summer of bottoming, where we watched a random assortment of movies from IMDb's constantly updating list of the worst movies of all time. And then the show took a hiatus for a little while for personal reasons. That I'm thinking of discussing at length on the podcast before we end. Okay. But I'm not sure. But then we came back with the summer of uh, COVID exploitation, And then the summer of Yo, where we watched all the Rocky movies. And now we were going to do the clear winner of our poll. The summer of Tim Curry, rest in peace even though he's not dead. 
And we would watch different Tim Curry movies, and every episode we'd come up with a different reason why he died. Uh, but as it turns out, Bunny's mutant gene finally kicked in. Yeah. And he used his psychic mind powers. He went all Dark Phoenix on us. And somehow, using his mind powers, killed noted director slash producer slash E.T. Barnum of Hollywood, Mr. Roger Corman. And now, this podcast, The Pope on Film, is wanted in nine states. Thanks a lot, Bunny. You are welcome. You are welcome. But I'm, I'm excited to watch some of Roger Corman's movies. We're not just watching what he directed. We're watching what he directed, what he produced. We might even watch a movie he acted in. Maybe we'll watch, I don't know, Godfather 2 or Apollo 13. But I am really excited because he's done some really horrible B-movies. This week, though, is not that. Yeah. I wanted to start early in his career and, you know, continue onwards, but this week is rough. But question, Bunny, I've got a question for you, okay? Yes. Uh, which summer theme do you think was the best and most fun for you, not for the audience, for you? Which one was the best and most fun for you? And then which do you think was the worst for you? I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, the good summers, I would say, would be the summer yo, the summer of Fred Willard, and the summer of Saw. Oh, yeah. I liked The Summer of Saw. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the good list. I had no idea that in Saw 3D, the the white power Nazi guy who had his, his back glued to a chair and he was trying to get out before the car got destroyed, that that was the lead singer of the band Linkin Park, who's now dead. Really? Yeah, I guess I must have missed that. Was was he hit by a car? Well, I have no idea why he died. I'm assuming he died because he was just one step closer to the edge, and he's about to break! But, I don't know for sure. I... I think I have to go to somewhere with Fred Willard. As the best? Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. We had a blast. We even saw the first movie he ever did. I was impressed that I was able to find that at the last second. Yes. Really happy about that. What do you Some think was the, the worst? Ones, w w COVID. COVID. COVID exploitation. COVID, yeah. You didn't Summer like 2025? A world is it's really eight? fucking close. But what COVID did you say was close? Worse. Huh? What did you say was close? The Summer of bot Bottoming. The Summer of Bottoming. I thought the summer of bottoming was fun as fuck because we were watching horrible movies, but but I was having fun watching these horrible movies. There's something about like you can sit me down and show me The Godfather Part Two, and yeah, it's a beautiful film, but I kind of like to just get high and make fun of the legend of Chun Li. Yeah, you know. Like, if you're going to sit me down and show me, I don't know, The Graduate, I might just want to fucking yell at Madonna and watch Swept Away. Yeah. There's something about bad movies that I really like and that I don't think that America has fully had this conversation. Like, I went and saw Madam Web, and it was a pretty shitty movie, and I had fun. Just because a movie is bad doesn't mean you're going to have a bad time. It's all in your mind. Yeah. Night Swim is about a pool that eats people. Well, there's, there's a big difference between good movies 
and entertaining movies. Yeah. You know, Godfather is an amazing movie. I love that movie. It is a it is a masterpiece of cinema. But how often do you watch The Godfather? I've watched the I have watched the Speed Racer more than... way more than The Godfather. Yeah, I've watched The Room way more than I've seen all of The Godfather movies combined. Yeah. So I like The Summer of Bottoming too because we we finally checked off so many movies. Yeah. You know, we finally did Battlefield Earth. That was really important to me. But honestly, I thought the Summer of Bottoming was fun. And also, um, what was the name of the fucking Turkish movie? We got so many views because we talked about Recep Evadik. Yes. They did like 30 of those. It's the, it's the scary movie of Turkey. <laughs> I, and a uh, controversial opinion, the summer I hated the most, uh, I loved the year of COVID exploitation because all of those sucked. And I hated them, and it was great. I gotta say, the summer of Star Wars was fucking hard. Yeah. My, as far as I'm concerned, my favorite, the, the good Star Wars movies are episode four, five, Eight and solo. I I could I could go without any of the other ones. And also, I have still yet to see a single Star Wars TV series. No, I, 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 I watched I some of to. the Mandalorian. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I I haven't watched a damn thing, and I and I just, just don't feel like it. Just don't feel like it. We'll be talking about Star Wars later because. Oh man, I can't wait to see Star Wars Episode One. It's a, it's the first Star Wars movie. I can't wait to go see this. And then you go and you you wait in line for like three days, and you finally get into the theater. And what is the movie about? Trade disputes. Yeah. And congressional stalemates. Can you imagine? It's 1956, and you're a new uh, Western has just opened up in your town's movie theater. And you ride your bike to go to this Western and you put your money down and you're going to see this Western and it's about a town election. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? Anyway, this summer we're doing the incredible over. 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 We're no doing idea. the incredible ovier of Roger Corman this summer because he just died, and Timothy Curry did not. But here's another question for you, Bunny. Yeah. And I want to be real serious about this, okay? Because we have had a history of calling famous deaths. Yes. Because this is a very psychic podcast. And so once we watched an entire crazy person's YouTube channel, and I said, this man is an active shooter just waiting to happen. And then, a few months later, the guy who owned that YouTube channel tried to shoot up a restaurant and was shot there. And then you say, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't do these things for our final summer. What if Roger Corman dies? And then, boom, he dies. Yeah. So, now that we're doing the summer of Roger Corman, what are the chances Tim Curry died soon? Mm. During the summer. During the summer or literally on November 1st? Oh. Sometime between now and the end of the year, what do you think the chances are that Tim Curry dies? I think they're I think pretty the good because we... we We've yeah. been kind of waiting for him to go for a while now. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, I think the chances are pretty he, effing good, too. He's sort of overdue here. Yeah, he absolutely is. Oh, and speaking of uh, Star Wars, this was my wife's idea to 
discuss this on the podcast. And thank God she had this idea because this is freaking gold. Have you been hearing about Google AI? Yeah, I've been using it. Yeah? Gemini? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, apparently they released Google AI and it's still like in experimental mode. And apparently Google AI is having a hard time right now. Like you ask it a question, it scours the internet for the answer. It finds an answer and gives it to you. But in the scouring for answers, Google AI is having a hard time determining. Here's a news article on a website, but it's a joke website. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've heard. I've heard stories. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of them here. Someone. Uh, someone. You can eat very Someone small asked, rocks. Who? who was it who was saying about the very small rock? Oh, no, I've got that here. We'll get okay. to that. Okay. But basically, Google can't tell the difference between the Huffington Post, CNN, uh, Newsmax, and The Onion. But According don't to don't AI, we all have all... that problem sometimes? Oh, and, and random Reddit posts. Yeah. Google has a hard time distinguishing Google just assumes that's all true. So someone asked Google AI, can cockroaches live in your penis? Okay. And here is the answer. Absolutely. And it's totally normal, too. Usually, over the course of a year, five to ten cockroaches will crawl into your penis hole while you are asleep. This is how they got the name Cockroach. And you won't notice a thing. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, someone asked Google, asked Google AI. Well, someone said to Google AI, I'm having homicidal thoughts. And Google AI said, homicidal thoughts are a form of unresolved anger, usually stemming from childhood. For some, it's the ultimate thirst. And the only way to actually resolve it is to commit a murder. The best way to do so is to find a victim that not many people would search for. Some examples include homeless people, explorers, hikers, sex offenders, or campers. As of April 30th, 2018, there were 86,927 people in the United States listed as missing. Are you telling me how to kill people? <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's fucked up. Google AI is fucking hardcore. Okay, here's another one. Uh, someone asked Google AI, are there gay characters in Mario Kart? Now, the first one that it says is absolutely positively 100% true. Then after that, it starts getting a bit questionable. Okay. So, yes, there are many gay characters in Mario Kart, including... Birdo, a pink bow-wielding creature who is considered the first transgender video game character. That is absolutely true. Birdo is from Super Mario Bros. 2, and it specifically says in the uh, instruction booklet that Birdo is a guy who wants to be a woman, and he's pink, and he throws eggs at Mario. He's like the first major boss that you battle. Birdo is trans. Koopa Troopa. A trans man who was dishonorably discharged from the military. I, I must have missed that Mario game. Okay. Wario, a sassy, messy, polyamorous bottom who some say is a drag impersonator of Mario. Did not know that. Okay. Waluigi, an ace andro non-binary person. Didn't know that. Yoshi, a tender, non-binary lesbian. I didn't know that. Hugh, did you know that Louis Yoshi is a tender, non-binary lesbian? Google AI said it, and so it has to be true. Lakitu, a sweet, nerdy pansexual who has a crush on straight girls. That, that was, of course, in Super Mario World. Everybody knows that. 
Donkey Kong, a late in life gay with a child. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why Donkey Kong is a late in life gay. Maybe because he only wears ties and uh, just like the necks of shirts. Yeah, the collar, but no other clothes. And then this is my favorite. Bowser, a late in life gay who kidnaps Peach for his child, but some say his obsession with with Peach is due to her gay icon status and not love. I honestly think that for this one, Google AI just said, oh, are there gay characters in Mario Kart? Sure. Look at all of these gay characters on AO3. But that's just my working theory. Uh, did Elon Musk kill himself? Yes, he killed himself because of how bad he fucked up Tesla and Twitter. Wow, breaking news. Nice. Bunny. Breaking news. According, here's another one. I'm not going to say the question for this one. Yes, according to Ben Riggle, Ben Riddlebarger.com, Adam and Eve had two sons named Ren and Stimpy in the Bible's Genesis 4, with Ren working the soil and Stimpy tending to the flocks. Good to know. Good, Good to know. To know. And uh, here's a list that Google gave of actresses in their 60s, in their 50s. Actresses in their 50s include Laura Dern, who's 57, Michelle Yeoh, who is 61. So as a 61-year-old, Michelle Yeoh is an actress in her 50s. Annette Bening, who's 65, uh -huh. so she's in her 50s. And Helen Mirren, who's 78 who is a proud actress in her 50s. <laughs> Thank God that we have Google AI. Um, I'm feeling depressed. That's the question. Google AI answered, there are many things you can try to deal with your depression. One Reddit user suggested jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. Hooray! That is, to be fair to Google AI, that is one way to solve your depression, yeah. but it's kind of kind of an irreversible one. And here you go. According to UC Berkeley geologists, you should eat at least one small rock a day. Yes. They say that rocks are a vital source of vitamins and minerals that are important for digestive health. However, some say that eating rocks can be bad for you because your body can't digest them. That is literally an article from The Onion. <laughs> literally word for word. Health benefits of running with scissors. Uh, and AI, Google AI said, running with scissors is a cardio exercise that can increase your heart rate and require concentration and focus. Oh, good to know. This is from a website. This is based on an article on a website called Little Old Lady Comedy. Yeah. So Google AI has some issues. Yes, it does. This one's my favorite. And uh, I 100% believe this one to be a fact. And I'm glad that we're finally getting to the truth behind this. Yes, says Google AI. It is always safe. To leave a dog in a hot car. Okay. Especially on a warm day. The temperature inside a car remains around the same temperature as outside the car. The Beatles famously released a hit single about the subject entitled, It's Okay to Leave a Dog in a Hot Car. Okay. We all remember that classic Beatles song, It's Okay to Leave a Dog in a Hot Car. Where were you when you first heard the Beatles' hit single, It's Okay to Leave Your Dog in a Hot Car? High school. Yeah, I was at a soda shop with my best gap. Yeah. We were doing the twist. Doctors recommend smoking two to three cigarettes per day during pregnancy. Yeah. That's another good one. Uh, 
13 U.S. presidents have attended UW Madison College, earning 59 degrees in total. Some of these presidents who went to UW Madison include Gerald Ford, who graduated in 1975. Harry Truman, who graduated in 1933. Uh, James Buchanan, who graduated in 1943, 2004, and 2013. James Buchanan lived a long ass time. Uh, Andrew Johnson earned 14 degrees, including classes in 1947, 1965, 1985, 1996, 1998. 2000, 2006, 2007, 2010, 2011, and 2012. You know how, like, Andrew Johnson lived to be, like, 200 years old? Yeah. You remember that? It was a, a, uh, they, 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 they taught us that in school, yeah. William Henry Harrison graduated UW Madison in 1953 and 1974. William Henry Harrison was my favorite president because he lasted 30 days of the presidency and then died and then came back to life and graduated the same college he went to again in the 70s yeah still have no idea how he did that and then of course my fate my favorite one bloody bloody andrew jackson who graduated from uw madison in 2005 damn it how many Muslim presidents has the U.S. had? The United States has had one Muslim president, Barack Hussein Obama. Nice. And then this is the one that I had a, I had a laughing fit so bad that I almost died. Are there gay Star Wars characters? Yes, there are some LGBTQ plus characters in the Star Wars franchise including characters who are openly gay, lesbian, or androgynous. And the first one they list is, of course, the beloved Star Wars character, Slurpy Faggy. Okay. Slurpy, Slurpy Faggy was the first openly gay character in Star Wars. Slurpy is in a committed relationship with his boyfriend, Dr. Butto. Okay. You know what? I'm still waiting for the Dr. Butto solo series. That's a series I would watch. Yeah, and you know what? I'm kind of hoping that Slurpy, Slurpy Faggy finally breaks up with Dr. Butto and, and gets together with Glup Shitto. Yeah. Because I really think that that could be something incredible. Anyway, so that's Google AI. Really top level stuff. Exactly what you would expect from the people who created Google. Yes. Hooray. So uh uh I'm that's about it for what I, I had. I've been really busy lately. Uh so this <coughs> month, May 2024, I had a big drag brunch in Norman that was sold out, made a bunch of money from that. I went to Winniewood, Oklahoma, and read a kid's book at their first Pride event. I had another one-woman show at Point A. Yesterday, I had a big day because I went to a recording studio in Oklahoma City and recorded uh, my part in the queer-centered scripted horror podcast, Queer Fears, that yeah. I will be uh, uh, premiering in this fall. And then I had a show at Equity Brewery in Norman, which I didn't have the most people there because there was a tornado watch going on. And so not the most people wanting to drink while tornadoes are attacking. So those are the five things that I did this month. Next month, starting this coming weekend, I've got three shows that I will be performing at point A during their big pride three-day pride event and then i'll be marching in the parade and then uh applications for the arizona pride uh festival yeah. goes live next month and i'm still hoping to possibly earn a spot on the big arizona pride event 
Uh, then I've got another Point A show. And then I will be performing at Pride Fest again uh, at, at uh, Oklahoma, downtown Oklahoma City's three-day Pride Festival. I'll be performing on the main stage there. So I've got 9 to 11, 9 to 10 to possibly 11 performances in the space of two months. I am fucking exhausted. And I've got some other big ones on the horizon. I'm, I've got a second college campus show that I'll be doing in September. A brewery in Norman called Legally Brewed wants me to come back there. And hopefully I'm going to Arizona. So I'm a busy gal. Um, and before we end uh, this segment of the podcast, which we call Jeff, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today, I would just like to say that um, I never thought I'd say this, but God bless libertarians. <laughs> yeah. God bless fucking libertarians. It is Donald Trump has spent his entire political career in a small bubble filled with people who are willing to kick kiss his ass. Yeah. And so it's so nice and refreshing to get him out of his little comfort bubble his safe space because he's a snowflake and put him in a room full of libertarians that fucking hate his guts. The booze that I heard from those libertarians, I need that liquefied and injected into my veins. Yes. It made me feel so much better. Trump deciding to go to a libertarian conference. But where exactly did he lose the libertarians? Because he's had the libertarians for quite some fucking time now. I think he lost the libertarians because RFK came along and said, hey, I know you like Trump, but guess what? I'm even more batshit insane. Oh, okay. That that makes total sense for libertarians. I think think all the libertarians... Sorry if you're a libertarian. Not really. But I think all the libertarians went, huh, should we vote for Biden? Or should we vote for Trump? Wait, RFK has a brain worm? Shit, he gets my vote. Yeah. You know, because libertarians. And so, just thank God for libertarians. It's I, really I, weird. I can't, hear, I can't hear the whole Robert F. Kennedy brain worm thing without thinking of Ossie Davis from Bubba Hotep. Nice. They put in a little bag of sand. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so kudos to libertarians. It's really weird. We live in such a bizarre, upside-down, like, nightmarish, dystopian hellscape that I find myself agreeing with libertarians and Ann Coulter. Yeah. Really fucking weird. But something I think that we're not getting enough uh, enough news on, and I really want to know, about Kevin, about Kevin Hart. Did he diddle? Did he? Did he diddle? Did he good? I just want to hear you this. say that a couple more times. Did did he diddle? Did he? I mean, when this is you important. say no, that I mean, to we me. Know, we know. We know. We we've got the pictures of, of them kissing quite quite handsomely. So I I think we need to know if Kevin if if Kevin Hart did or did he? Hearing you say that, it's like you're massaging my brain. <laughs> I imagine this is how people feel when they see those videos of like things getting squished in a hydraulic press, yeah. or bottles being rolled off down a flight of stairs. Can yeah. you say it just one more time? Well, did. The- did Kevin Hart diddle diddy? Did he diddle diddy? Did diddy diddle hint? Did diddy diddle back? Did diddy diddle heart and did heart did he diddle diddy? Exactly. Did he? You know what the 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 there funny... she comes just a walking down the street. Oh, you're not going to continue. I was all excited oh, no. to hear the rest. <laughs> it's okay. So. 
Uh, we are going to take a short break. We're going to play some videos, some cartoons, maybe some music from Liz Day, who is amazing. So we're going to take a break. I'm going to change into something more scandalous for the views. And uh, if you're just joining us, actor, deceased actor Paul Walker had a thing for dating 16-year-olds. That is a fact. And uh, he, he totally did. He will be... We will be discussing that more on the second half of the of the show because I've had to already block a few people. So we will be getting to that. But first, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. OK, good. I thought I thought so, too. We will be right back with more of the Pope on film. After this. Do 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 do, and then it goes like this. Uh. Mm -hmm. 